Today I've got a 2003 Toyota Highlander here in the shop and it's a basket case. It's got a lot of problems, but the one we're gonna be working on today is a trouble code, which is P0171. Now that trouble code means that the computer thinks that the engine is running too lean, but my nose is telling me that that engine is running way too rich. The exhaust coming out of that tailpipe is noxious. It smells like raw fuel and that's why we're covering this problem first. Coming up, we're going to take a DIY friendly approach to this diagnostic so that you can follow along if you're having the same problems with your Toyota. We're also going to be using a less expensive scan tool that's affordable for DIY. Today's episode of Tool Demos starts right now. First things first, for this diagnosis, we're going to use a scan tool. I'm not going to use the big one with all the functions. It'll read trouble codes and get live data out of those modules so we can do a pretty good job of diagnosis. Let's get it on the car. I'm just gonna hook up the data cable to this tool and then hook it up to the port on the car. This doesn't have a battery in it or any other way to power it. It just gets power from the car so it'll turn on as soon as I plug it in. All right, let's let it boot up. See how long that takes. There it goes, real quick. So we're going to choose Asian vehicles and we're just going to go down and find Toyota. Okay, we're just going to read codes. Okay, it's got P0300, 301, 303, and 305. So that's interesting. That looks like bank one. It's all on the right side of the engine. All of these odd number cylinders, one, three, and five, that's on the right side. So that's a clue. Also, it says system two lean. Let's go ahead and start up the engine. We're gonna look at live data to see what's going on with those air fuel sensors. It does have an exhaust leak, so it's a little bit loud, but we're not gonna run it very long. Here we go. Okay, so bank two, we've got long-term at 5% and short-term at negative five. So it balances out to zero, that's good. But look at this on bank one. You, it's adding fuel 52% and then short term it's adding almost 20%. That's what I smell. The fuel sensor on bank one can't smell it. Let's check that out. So here's what we have going on. The computer is telling us that bank one is not getting enough fuel or it's getting too much air. But what we're smelling is that the computer is adding way too much fuel to bank one and it's coming out as raw fuel from the tailpipe. So what I think might be happening here is the air fuel ratio sensor on bank one is not reporting correctly. So what can we do here? Let's have a look inside. All right, so here's your engine. The front of the engine is here towards the right side of the vehicle. So this bank just back here is gonna be the right bank and this is gonna be left. The left bank here on this car is bank two. This is cylinder two, four, and six. And then this one over here, the one you can't see, it's behind this intake. You've got cylinders one, three, and five. That's bank one, and that's where we're having the problem. Now what I'm gonna do as a quick test is remove both of them. I'm gonna take this one out of bank two and then go down below, get that one out of bank one and swap them. First things first, let's go, we'll find the pigtail where that goes right down into here. There's the connector. Let's get that off of the bracket. Okay, just pulled it off of that bracket. Now I gotta push right here to unlock it and pull out the other end. All right, there we go. The tools that we're using today are from GearWrench. This is a sensor socket kit. It's the master kit, so it's got a lot of different sensor sockets. The part number for this master kit is 41720, and I'll put an Amazon link just below the like button if you want to check it out for yourself. Here's that O2 sensor socket. I've got it on a flexible ratchet. But you can see I've got this coolant hose in the way and that socket's really long. So what I'm gonna do is trade it out for a shorter socket and I'll only use this one for down below. All right, here's an offset one. Let's see if that'll work. So if you can see that now I've got a lot more room for both my ratchet and this socket. It should come off pretty easy now. Now I can just unscrew this sensor by hand. Really just cracking it loose 
is the most difficult part. It comes out pretty easy. All right, this one looks pretty good. As you can see, it's it's got that toasty brown. There's some staining on it, but it doesn't look too bad. I like the way this sensor looks. Now, let's go ahead and go down below. The sensor comes out the same way, but it's a lot more difficult to get to. Then we're just gonna swap these. I'm gonna put this one down underneath on bank one, and then bank two is gonna come out up here. This is the passenger side. We're gonna just zoom in. That's the drive shaft there. And you go just above there, you can see that the exhaust is right here. There's a good close-up of that AFR, and we follow that pigtail all the way up to there. Attached to that loom is the connector, so we need to unplug that connector first. It's a really tight area, so what I'm going to use is this pair of hose pliers. It's just curved at the end, and it's got really long handles, so I can curve around that connector and grab it because it's tough to do with my fingers in such a tight area. All right, I was able to disconnect it with these pliers. Let's go ahead and take off that sensor. All right, you can see that that sensor socket is over top of that sensor and I've got the longest 3 8 ratchet that I've got. So we're gonna break that loose. If I can, I'll get that sensor out of here. You definitely want a long ratchet for that. Now that we're back up top, here's bank one sensor. It looks like it's been contaminated with soot. The engine is definitely running rich. I don't know if that's the reason why this sensor has failed, but compare that to the one that we took out of bank two here. You can see a big difference between those sensors. Let's go ahead and install this in bank two, and this one will go in underneath on bank one. Doing a little trading places here. I feel pretty confident that this is going to be the fix, but I don't want to just go on that and take a guess because these sensors can be hundreds of dollars. On Rock Auto, uh, I looked at a Denso unit for this car, I priced it out and that was the cheapest I found. I think it was $170 or something like that. Local auto parts stores want $400 for this thing. Uh, crazy. These air fuel ratio sensors, very expensive, but you got to have them. You can't just use a cheap oxygen sensor. It will not work. Go ahead and just plug this into the connector. There we go. Let's go back over here. I'm just gonna tighten this sensor down so it doesn't leak. And that's it. I'm not gonna put too much torque on there. Just doing this to test it out. So I'm gonna go underneath. I'm not gonna show you that. It's way too hard to record. Same method, just screw it in, plug it in, and we're gonna go and look at the scan tool to see what kind of data we got now. All right, I think I got a better picture for you now. You can see that the long-term fuel trim on bank one, that's the one in the back is 52%. And up front, number two, it's uh, about 7%. So let's go ahead and start the vehicle and see what it changes to, if at all. All right, here we go. Now we can see that that long-term fuel trim on bank one is starting to come down. It's correcting now. So I think we've got this problem solved. That's good enough for me to go ahead to Rock Auto, order another air fuel ratio sensor. Let's do that and when it comes in, I'll install it. I'm really glad that we were able to do a couple of simple tests and find the problem the first time so that we didn't waste money guessing and buying parts that we didn't need. As I said before, this car is a bit of a basket case and I'm going to be doing a lot of repairs over a period of a few weeks here. So as I do those, I'm going to put those videos into a playlist and you can click right over here to watch that playlist as those videos become available.